personality where um, kind of draws people to him. Who, whoever he meets, people just like him. I don't know anyone that hates him. David, I hate that guy. I'm just kidding. Uh, David, uh, okay, let me, let's see, David. He's really funny and easygoing, and I think I would describe him as calm, cool, and collected. So he's always been really a funny, quirky guy. We would always come up with these random dares or things to do. It was more so when we started playing Counter Strike, we started hanging out more. Hellnet days, and then the windy days. You can just stare at him right in the face, and I bet you you can't even keep a straight face. Hey, right, let's test it. Ready? <laughs> A lot of us were there and then we just dared him to flush his head down the toilet. And so he's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. So, so he stuck his head into the toilet and then we flushed it. And it like came out all swirly. So it's just kind of, he's, you know, that, I feel like that story really says a lot about him. Okay, so a few years back we went to Cedar Point, it's an amusement park in the States. We were heading to a roller coaster and uh, we tried to cut the line. One of the ride operators caught us and uh, he told us can't cut the line, obviously, you know, so go away. So as we're walking away, um, I look back and all I see is David looking back at him giving, uh, giving the middle finger kind of like this. Angie's really charismatic, really fun, really out there. David's really funny too and fun, but he's more like low-key. You know, he lets Angela shine, which is good, that's what she wants anyways. I remember like I would have conversations with Angela and she would tell me how in love she is with my brother and she would describe their love as exponentially growing, that if it was on a graph it would be like jumping over the years. So I think that's something that's pretty special about them, the fact that their bond has continued to grow. I know Angela loves food. She's very, very fond of food. She likes trying new things. Self-proclaimed foodie. <laughs> no offense, Angie. <laughs> she's funny, she's outgoing, and she's very lighthearted to the point that she's blunt and in your face, that it's funny. She can be a bee, or she can be like, you know, an angel, or a funny person, a really drunk person. Everything. Very versatile. Anytime you go out with Angela and you party with her, she will always hunt you down and make you drink lots of shots. And then when you do drink a lot, she'll be like, why don't you drink more? Angie, Montreal, we're, we're partying in the hotel room. And this is pre, pre party to uh, Emily's wedding. But anyways, we got we got to the hotel, we start we start drinking, and then they blast up the friggin' uh, the music. But it wasn't loud enough, so what they did was took a garbage can and then they put the phone inside the garbage can so it amplified the noise. And she runs around like, guys, do you feel the music? And Roger's lying, we're tired, we're like, yeah, yeah, we feel the music. And then she goes, you don't look like you, you feel the music, stick your head in the garbage can. When my parents met Angela, I'm not sure if they liked her either because she kind of just moved all her stuff into our house and started living with us. They were really young actually, he um, brought her over, I think they moved in when we were in high school. And you know how Asian parents are, they want like, they want their rent, you know, you don't live for free. <laughs> Slowly, David would be bringing in more, more and more of her personal belongings, so it was kind of a smooth transition for Angela living with us. them as a couple is that they've become happier with time. David and Angela do not argue. Like they are the only couple I know who does not ever argue. They both have the capability to be pretty damn crazy when they're drunk. So Angie tends to scream and run around and yell and then David would basically do the same thing and then sometimes if we're lucky we'll get them both in the same behavior just running around crazy. So David Lee comes up to me at a party one day and he's like, I have a secret to tell you. And then he's like, I'm going to ask Angela to marry me. And then so we came up with a really elaborate plan months before they got engaged because he was trying to plan on it. And 
buying a ring. So first thing was we didn't know what her ring size was. So our plan was that every house party that we had, we'd get her blackout drunk and then we'd sneak into wherever she is and stick my ring on her finger just to figure out her ring size. The moment I found out when uh, David was going to propose to Angela, he was really drunk. He came up to me one day and he was like, hey, hey, Eric, come here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to propose to Angela soon. I actually found out when I was at the uh, no me. So I'm sitting down and then I'm right right around the corner from the door. She barges in, she goes, guys, look! Shows her hand. I was like, holy shit, there's the rock! David took her out to see the stars because she always wants to see the stupid stars. <laughs> and then he proposed to her there. She was really surprised and like taken back because she had no idea. I don't really have any advice for them. It's just that for them to stay together so long and it seems like they still enjoy each other's time, they still do new things. They're so great together. And it's really, I think I want advice from them instead. So don't argue with her if you don't have to and always say, you're right, honey. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't really need this advice from me, but I once heard at another wedding from my friend's parents. Two words of advice would be compromise and communication. Remember this moment and remember how happy you're feeling today and to kind of carry this feeling with you throughout your relationship. 